Hi everyone, in this video we will discuss securing the storage infrastructure. Storage infrastructure here means the storage arrays and the virtualized data centers where our confidential uh, data, personal identities and financial transactions lie. So uh, we need to secure it because nowadays uh, we, data can be shared over the network and it is more exposed to attackers uh, and various other threats which can cause damage to the business data hence it is required to secure it so let's get started with this the topics that we will cover today is information security framework then we have the risk triad and uh, storage security domains in which we will be discussing application access domain management access domain and securing backup replication and archive let's first discuss information security framework so the basic three components of this framework is confidentiality integrity and availability and the last one is accountability first uh, confidentiality means uh, we only want to allow authorized people to access the data. We do not want any kind of person who is not authorized or not authenticated should be able to access the data. So in this case, we want to ensure that attackers are not able uh, to access the system. Uh, it is more important when we are storing the data over the cloud or where there are multiple users accessing so confidentiality must be ensured in that case in order to ensure the confidentiality uh, that's why we have uh, our login ids and passwords for our gmail accounts facebook accounts and all the accounts so that only we can log in to our account so next is integrity. Integrity means maintaining the correctness of the data, means our data should not be altered. No other person can alter or delete any important information uh, so that uh, it is not breached. We don't want to breach this component. Next is availability means making the resources application network available to the authorized users. So the attacks that can cause unavailability of the data or applications as denial of service attacks. So this is the cyber attack in which the attacker makes the resources unavailable so that no user is properly able to access the resources or network. Last one is accountability service. So this ensures that we maintain the log and uh, we track the records and any kind of action that happens in the data center so that when any attack occurs, we can trace any kind of malicious user who tries to access the data or the host or uh, the backup services. Uh, we uh, ensure it, uh, we ensure the accountability surf service for the sake of finding out if any kind of malicious attack has occurred in the system. So these are the four components of information security framework and if we want to make our storage system secure we must ensure the confidentiality, integrity and availability of the system. Next is the risk triad. So the three main components of the risk triad is the assets, threats, and vulnerability. So assets include uh, any kind of document, data, software, hardware, and the threats can be the potential risk that can cause loss of the data or can alter or change the data, or can someone can even have the unauthorized access to the data. The vulnerability means the exposure of the network to the threats right so for the example we can consider that uh, if you're sending a confidential document over the network which is insecured any kind of attacker can access to that particular document and can breach the confidentiality and can have unauthorized access to that document so here the document is the asset 
the threat is the attacker who is breaching the confidentiality and the vulnerability means the insecure network which is allowing threat to occur which is a which is giving space to the attacker to attack on our asset which is the document so now we will discuss these three components in detail the first one is the assets as i've already explained the important information which is lying on a storage array hardware software and the infrastructure components including data centers all these become the assets for an organization and we need to secure this so that the business does not face any kind of loss so in this case the business organizations need to define the set of parameters uh, that make these assets secure so the two main objectives of any organization the first one is that it want to make the network available reliably to all the authorized users secondly the need to make it difficult for the potential users uh, to access and compromise the system for that what they can do is they can uh, create the backup of the data they can replicate and perform the mirroring so that if any kind of uh, disastrous loss occurs to the data it should be made available uh, to the authorized people moreover data can be stored in an encrypted form uh, no malicious user can access the data if it is in the encrypted form and most importantly there should be enough security measures uh, that gives us the security against the virus worms or any trojans so these were the assets next is the threats so threats are of two kinds active threats and the passive threats so active threats include data modification which can breach the integrity means if someone is modifying the data is altering the data so these kind of attacks are called as active and the second one is denial of service attack means making the resources and the applications unavailable to the authorized users so this can breach the availability of the system and the next one is repudiation tasks which can breach the accountability so repudiation attacks means that any person or attacker uh, who has done something malicious to the system uh, that person then eliminates and removes any kind of record that can prove that something malicious has uh, been done on the system so this repudiation attack means that removing any record any log any transaction that can prove any sort of malicious attack the next one are the passive attacks so these are the attempts to gain the unauthorized access into the system so passive attacks can be eavesdropping or snooping eavesdropping means uh, if someone overhears the conversation in an unauthorized manner and the snooping also means accessing someone's information in an unauthorized way so if we are accessing the information in an unauthorized means means that the confidentiality is breached so these are the possible threats to the organization next is vulnerability so whenever we are sharing the storage over the network so there is the path through which the information or the resources are shared so all these paths contains the access points now if these access points are not made secure any attacker can easily attack into the system so what we do is we provide different layers of security at all those access points which is called as defense in depth or this is also called as layered approach to security means here we implement different security mechanisms in order to uh, ensure that all the access points are secured now the three factors uh, that we consider when accessing the extent uh, to which an environment is vulnerable is the three kind of threats that is the attack surface attack vector and the work factor
so the attack surface uh, means that the various entry points that an attacker to use to exploit an attack so a person can use different hardware components the management software to access to the host using different access points the next one is attack vector so this include a series of steps that a person can carry out to complete an attack for instance you can consider that a person who first exploit a uh, malicious software into the host this is the first step next in the second step person can snoop into the system and thirdly that person can change the configuration of the system breaching the integrity then in the last step that person can deviate all the traffic to his own server or to some other host or can more than one host the third one is the work factor so this refers to the amount of time and effort required to exploit an attack vector so this means that how much time and effort is required to exploit an attack so for example consider that if the attacker wants to uh have attack or have unauthorized login to sensitive information then that person first have to break the privileges to have the unauthorized access then that person might need to determine the database schema and then might have to write the queries in order to get the information fetched on the other hand if it is less time and effort intensive process that person can simply attach the storage arrays to his own host in order to get the unauthorized access so these are the possible threats that a person can carry out firstly so he can attack on the surface then it it's the attack vector that he might need to perform a series of steps and the third one is work factor the amount of time and effort that the person has to perform in order to exploit his attack on the system so next is storage security domains now in this in order to identify the threats that apply to a storage network access paths there are three domains that we will be discussing the first is application access management access and the third one is backup replication and archive here you can have so it's uh, have a look on this diagram so these are the various storage security domains so it's very important to first identify the threats that can uh, be encountered in application access accessing the management and then the backup replication and archive so why do we do that because whenever we are sharing the storage over the network and uh, thus the network is more exposed to the threats or the malicious uh, software so it's uh, very important to identify the threats first and then to define the controlling mechanism and the securing the storage system so first we are going to discuss how we can secure the application access domain important to secure the application uh, access domain and all the threats in this environment so for that have a look on this diagram so we have two hosts and today has authorized access on volume 1 and host b has authorized access on volume 2 show the confidentiality host a must should only be able to access these volumes and host b should only be able to access volume 2 however in this case what can be the threat the threat can be the host a accessing the volumes of host b so host a can have unauthorized access to these volumes other thing is that some other host unauthorized host can enter into the storage network and can spoof and can perform uh, the snooping of the volumes can uh, which are uh, which are of host a or host b 
so these kind of threats can uh, be dangerous for the business where any kind of unauthorized uh, host either accessing the volumes of host a and host b or even entering into the network and trying to um, read out the backups or the replications of the storage arrays of different hosts so this includes the breaching of confidentiality and integrity so this host can even perform denial of service attack or can perform the snooping or can uh, alter the contents of the drive next is what are the various controlling parameters uh, in this case so firstly access control mechanisms used in the application access domain are user and host authentication and authorization this is very very important a strong secured uh, environment is required so that only the authenticated host should be able to access the storage secondly the creation of access control list uh, which is on the basis of uh, role based access list means uh, we divide uh the people into their different roles and authorization and authentication is provided to them according to the rules of the organization so for this the two steps of security is first is host authentication the second is, second is securing volumes and pools and administrative controls so after host host authentication we need to secure the volumes and pools for that um, zoning can be implemented because zoning provides a particular path which can be used for managing the data traffic lun masking can allow a particular host to access only to his uh, logical unit number not the other host logical unit number after that the multiple administrative controls uh, should be carried out in that case regular auditing is required so that we ensure the proper functioning of the administrative controls uh, moreover event logs should also uh, be protected from unauthorized access because in that case if the event logs are exposed to unauthorized uh, users that can also be a possible threat for the system next is we need to protect the storage environment so firstly uh, we need to take care of the network infrastructure integrity and the second one is storage network encryption network infrastructure integrity means that we only allow the authorized users to access a particular fabric switch function means uh, we can prevent a host from at being added into the san network san fabric without any authorization second in case of storage network encryption uh, we can use ipsec or sp uh, fcsp protocols in order to ensure uh, the security role based access control can be deployed as I've already explained that uh, only giving privileges to the users according to the roles like administrators should only be given the access to the management tasks and uh, rest of the users groups and owners should be given privileges according to their role data encryption uh, should be carried out if we want to uh, securely store our data by encrypting it so that uh, the data is in the safe state before being transferred to the disk so second is securing the management access domain here the management access uh, includes the monitoring provisioning and the managing storage resources and which is associated with every device within the storage network as many management softwares uh, support cli command line interfaces system management consoles web based interfaces so there can be possible threats to the system through these applications to understand the security threats in a management access domain have a look on this diagram here we have the production host which is uh, connected to the F S fc switch over san and so this production host is sending the data to the storage array a this is the storage infrastructure for this production host and this 
storage array for the users this remote storage array be for the purpose of backup and replication so all the data which is stored a uh, here is sending to the remote storage array b and then we have an external host which is having the storage management platform which has been connected using ip network so what can be the possible threat here is any unauthorized host can access the network and this person can access the storage arrays or this unauthorized host can even uh, get the access to this remote storage array and then can perform the denial of service and all the possible threats that is in the hands of this unauthorized host so whenever we are using any external host for the storage management platform over the network so this kind of configuration be, uh, gives more exposure to the threats and unauthorized hosts like this so what can be done in this case is we can use the secure communication channels like SSH and uh, multiple protocols like transport layer security TLS can be implemented. Log monitoring can be done uh, which can help us to identify any unauthorized access and unauthorized changes to the data center or our storage arrays. Third is placing event logs outside the storage array. So what can happen is if the sto shared storage is compromised, if any attacker has attacked the st uh, shared storage, if the event logs are placed outside that, we can track from the event logs uh, regarding any ma malicious attack on that system. Next is the administrator's identity and role should be secured in this so that any kind of malicious user cannot uh, perform any spoofing on the complete storage array. So next is controlling administrative access. How we can control is so administrative access regulation and various auditing techniques are used to enforce accountability of users and processes uh, next is we do not want a single user to have the ultimate control over all the as aspects of the system so instead what we can do is instead of giving a single person all the access we can divide uh, the access into the different roles using role based access control then it is very important to audit all the logged events in order to uh, ensure no unauthorized access and deploying a reliable network time protocol in which we synchronize the systems according to a common time so that we ensure that all the activities across the systems can be uh, consistently tracked next is protecting the management infrastructure so how we can protect is first uh, the management communication between the devices using IP network security and also the use of IP routers and Ethernet switches can restrict the traffic to certain devices. Then ensuring the conf confidentiality and integrity of the management data and availability of the networks and devices being used in the system. So these are the various uh, measures to protect the management infrastructure. Next is securing the backup and replication and archive. So as we know that the backup involves a copying of the data from a storage array to the backup media such as the tapes or disks. So if we say that our storage is vulnerable to the threats, then the backup can also be uh, can be having the same threats to be exposed to the attacker. So securing the backup is also important as we secure the storage arrays. Moreover, in this case, we also or any organization must also ensure that the disaster recovery site also maintains the same security level. So this is very important to ensure the storage arrays and uh, all the backup media such as tapes or disks where we are uh, saving our data. Moreover, the disaster recovery site all are secured. So in this case, what can be the threats? Let's consider that. So here you can see.
here we have the storage array which is performing the local backup at the backup devices these can be the tapes the first thread that uh, can be if uh, uh, data can also be stolen from these backup devices if we do not store the data in the encrypted form so this is uh, one of the main threats that can happen and so Moreover, this host is performing the replication on this storage array, which is disaster recovery site using the network. Because this is the network, any kind of unauthorized host can access uh, to the storage by attacking into the network. So what this can do is this can uh, fake has its identity means to this host it can request for the backup data by spoofing uh, this host's identity which is at the dr site so the storage array can provide the data to this unauthorized host instead of providing the data at the dr site so what we need to ensure is we need to ensure the proper security at the network whenever we are sending the data over the remote site for the backup purposes. Secondly, the data should be in the encrypted form if we are using uh, any kind of tape drives so that uh, it should not be used by any attacker for any unauthorized access. So these are uh, the three kind of storage security domains that need to be considered. I hope this helped you and thank you so much for watching.